Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Aubrey Warwick. I'm a yoga RYT with Yoga Fit and the Yoga Alliance. And I'm so excited that you are with me today to experience my empowered yoga class. So I've been practicing yoga since I was a teenager and then it was only natural for me to become a registered yoga trainer. And I think my favorite class experience to share with people is yoga. I love getting people hooked on yoga, all right? So I want you to know this practice was specifically designed with you in mind. And any of the asanas or poses today that might not feel necessarily organic on your body, there's always options and modifications. So it's important to listen to your body as well as take a good old fashioned child's pose whenever you need to, all right? So we are gonna get started here shortly. Make sure that you have some water nearby, maybe a blanket of sorts like I got on. I even have my socks on right now because it's pretty chilly in my sunroom, but um, we wanna make sure that we slip those socks off after our first portion of deep breathing. Also, I do have a yoga block with me. And if you don't have a yoga block at home, ain't no big deal. You can get a toy, you can get a gallon jug of water or milk, and that will suffice for what we needed to today. All right, so a little bit more about me. You can find me on all the socials as well as my website, opreywork.com. And let's get started. Okay. So today we are gonna be starting in easy seated pose, a simple cross leg position. You can choose to sit on your block if you'd like. And I, Goodness gracious, definitely I'm gonna sit on my block. This helps to allow your hip flexors and your inner thighs to relax. The knees drop down closer towards the ground and practice really good posture here. Imagine that there is a beam of energy coming from the base of the spine and all, pulling all the way up through the crown of your head, practicing again the best posture possible. At this point, everybody, we're gonna get started by closing our eyes. And with your eyes closed, we'll take our left hand and place it on the center of our chest. Take some natural deep breaths in through the nose and mouth and let it go. And with this placement of your left hand on your heart, feel your heart beating inside your chest. Take a deeper breath now and see in your mind's eye your beating heart. This heart muscle that has been beating since the day you were born. Fill it with a loving breath this time and express gratitude for all that it does for you. Now with our free hand, the right hand, we're gonna place it on the low belly or the solar plexus region. And connecting these two points, Fill up with air, but feel your right hand expanding, like you're giving yourself a baby belly on that inhale. And can you bring a calmness to your chest? Exhale. Inhale, inflating the lower, lower belly, keeping the chest rather calm. Now as you, again, just through this style of breathing, I will coach you more on the tempo shortly, Acknowledge this movement, this wave of breath in the low belly, washing over you like a wave of energy, relaxing you and calming you to provide you with a sense of security in the present moment. So as you breathe and feel the rise and fall, the expansion of your solar plexus, at this moment, I ask you to breathe in the word courage and exhale, fear. Again, inhale, courage, and exhale, fear. Inhale, bigger, feeling fuller, fullest. Exhale, continue breathing in the word courage, and allow that sensation of fear to start to dissolve from your body. Now, as you breathe in the word courage, I'd like you to visualize that word that is encompassed in yellow energy. So you feel 
the warmth, the sunny sensation of this word, and you turn it into a feeling. Now let's merge these two points. We breathe in the word courage, and we focus back at our beating heart that is full of love. We're going to take this time to express first love to ourselves in this moment. And I'd like you to say this to yourself at home, please. So you're going to say, I love you, and then insert your name. All right, so mine would be inhaling, I love you, Aubrey. Now at first, this might feel a little uncomfortable, but you are already courageous, so try it with me, would you? It's extremely powerful. Inhale, I love you, Aubrey. Now your turn, I love you. You can say it out loud as well, make it even more impactful. Now, as you continue to breathe in, feeling courageous and loving, feeling these two per points merging, in order to make your yoga practice and our time so powerful today, we are going to focus on two very important things. The, the desire that we have with our yoga practice, and our expectation. The desire is what we visualize in this moment. This present moment, what we desire to be our reality in our lives and for the lives of others. Requesting in our consciousness the most benevolent outcome for any lives that are being impacted by the current events of the world. Now the expectation our expectation here, we are going to let go of any doubt that is attached to our desirable outcome. Be confident as you breathe and channel that solar plexus chakra, that wheel of energy, that yellow, happy, sunshine feeling in the pit of your stomach and start to build it now. And at this point, when we merge our practice with our desire and our expectation, this is where we get to the ultimate state of meditation into a single brainwave state that is called alpha brainwave state. It enables us to get out of our lower level thinking, which is called beta brainwave. And through the power of our breath and our pineal gland, or third eye, we are going to get there today. It's going to be so awesome. We're going to play. We're going to make our own day, and we're going to send these feelings out to those who need it most. So let's get going. Now, at this point, I invite you to take your palms and face them up on your knees, and let's do some deep ocean-sounding breath. So at this point, you're going to fill up the belly, stretch the lungs, and feel the air entering through your nostrils. And on an exhale, like you're fogging up a mirror, you're going to let it out and say, and again, inhaling low belly, stretch the lungs east to west, fill up the nostrils, and let it go through the mouth and say, <sighs> keep going with that at your own pace for now. Inhale, feeling the three parts of your breath, feeling full, feeling satisfied, and taking us up to what I call your yoga high. <sighs> now, that ha sound. You can open your mouth up throughout your practice at any time. You can also close your mouth, but keep the lips slightly apart, and the breath will sound something like this. Now, some people call this the bratty teenager breath, but I don't have a teenager. <laughs> you know, I was really a, a perfect teenager back in the day, so I, I don't know what they're talking about, but you might. Now let's try this with five counts in. We're going to pause at the top of our breath, lingering for a moment, and then pausing at the base of the breath. Okay, so let's just shake and wiggle up the body for a second. Okay, let's begin. Inhaling for one, two, three, four, Five, pause and let's linger, let the breath marinate in the body. And exhale, five, four, three, two, 
one. Hang out in the basement right there. Inhaling bigger for one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling for one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Linger right here. You're going to do this again with me, but I'm going to say some phrases. And we begin. Inhale, peace begins with me. Exhale, peace begins with me. Inhale, peace begins with me. Me. Exhale, peace begins with me. One more. Inhale, peace begins with me. Now smile. Feel the peace, the love, the courage. Exhale, peace begins with me. Keep smiling. You can re-regulate your breath and slowly open your eyes. Beautiful job. Let's get moving. Okay. So if you had your socks on, you can slip them off right about now and toss them in the corner. If you have a blanket on like me, whew, it's time to take that off too. And we're going to start to get some blood flowing. I promise you a little sweat will be lost in our whole detox process. Let's begin with some cat and cows. This is known as flossing the spine. Starting with your hands looking like starfish on the mat. And you're going to press through what's called the triad of the hands. It looks like the letter L for love. And allow your armpits to lift as if somebody was about to tickle you. All right. Arching your back like a cat. And then allowing your tailbone to lift towards the ceiling. Lift your chin. Look at your nose into cow. Or you could close your eyes if you are just a cat and cow pro, which most of you just might be. Take your cat and cows at your own pace, visualizing your spine like seaweed in the ocean. So it's very much liquid-like. It is floating, and you can feel the lubrication of the water around you, supplying you with a beautiful amount of support. I actually like to think of my whole yoga practice like I'm very buoyant. And if you like the element of water, you can think that water is holding you up through a lot of these postures, providing you with that additional strength. Or another thing that I think about, if water is not your favorite thing to surround yourself with, you can think of like you're in a bowl of jello. Isn't that fun? Yeah. So you get lots of um, support that way too. Now from your cat and cow, we're going to wave our spine forward and back. So curl your toes under. Stretch out the soles of your feet. Push through the heels of your hands like in an extended child's pose. And then exhale. Push your heart forward towards the top of your mat to a kneeling plank. Inhale and then exhale. If it feels okay, keep your toes curled under. This is to stretch the fascia of the feet or you can point the toes. And then exhale, come forward, push that floor away, and get a little more grippy, grabby through the fingertips. Now, continue to flow like this. I'll supply you with some cues that will help you experience the power of the posture even more. So keep going. Let's see here. I'm gonna face the other way. Coordinate your breath with movement at this point. And the most important thing today with this Hatha Yoga experience and empowered yoga is that you keep breathing. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose for Ujjayi, ocean sounding breath if you're seasoned. If you're new with me, congratulations. After this class, you will no longer be a yoga virgin, but you can <sighs> exhale that heat through the mouth. Inhale, <sighs> exhale. Keep it flowing and connected. Now let's take the first down dog of the day. Maybe it's your first one. 
bringing some weight into that the letter L's of the hands, lifting the hips up now. Take a moment to glance at your feet. Feet are about hips distance apart. Now you're just going to walk your dog here. From walking your dog, we're not forcing anything. We're creating dynamic movement within this posture. Or asana. Asana basically means pose. Physical pose in Sanskrit. Give your head a little shake, a little nod here. Now what tends to happen is that we put all this weight just in the heels of the hands and the pinkies and the wrists take a beating. So if you can, think of like you are directing your elbows out slightly away from your ears. And start to bring a little bit more weight into those index fingers and to the tips of your thumbs. See how that helps. Now at any time you need to take a break, take a little flowery wrist roll break. I love doing this. Okay? You can see how I'm rolling through the backs of my hands. Or you can pretend like there's no paper towels in the bathroom and you just shake your hands out. Okay, now from walking the down dog, let's take a couple of calf raises here. You're going to rise up to the balls of your feet, draw your heels down. You can bend your knees, and the heels do not have to touch right now, all right, especially since we're not really warmed up. We're directing blood flow to the brain so that when you stand up, it's going to feel like you just have the world's best cup of coffee. I'm telling you what. So let's do that. Let's walk our dog and start to walk our feet all the way towards our hands, allowing the knees to soften. And at this point, we're going to take a baby reverse swan dive. So bend your knees about 90 degrees. Airplane your arms. Look out to come up. Merge your palms together, uniting the right and left hemispheres of the body. Bring your hands to your heart. Take a full, big Ujjayi breath. Exhale, bow into heart center. And coming into Tadasana, Mountain Pose. I always think, I say, ta-da. Okay, roll out the shoulders, shake out the body. From here, we're doing something that you might not be used to, a little non-traditional movement, but I call it sloughing. We're going to slough off the stuff that we don't want. So first, you're going to take your hands to the top of the shoulders and just give a nice stroke. I've always liked sloughing. I've done sloughing a lot when I was in college, <laughs> okay, in my modern dance classes, and it just felt so good. Preferably when somebody else did it for me, but for right now, we're just going to do it for ourselves. Slough it off. Now from this next slough, I love this one, it's like brush your shoulder off. So you're getting some hip hop up in this empowered yoga class today, did you know that? So when you are allowed to go back at the club, you know you, you can give me one of these. And you're just sloughing, okay? <laughs> All right. Now, let's take it for the legs. So we're going to trace our hands down the thighs and release. Outer thighs, tops of the thighs, wherever feels good right now. Yeah? Drop it down into a squat. Now, let's just pick a leg, any leg, and you're going to poke that leg in or outer thighs all the way down to the ankles. Now, as you're squatting down, push your hips back. Try not to round that spine at this time. Two more. And let's go to the other side. Big old slough. Notice how you start to feel that we're starting to provide awareness to all these little teeny tiny parts of the body. Yes. And even though this is not a lymphatic massage, it can still have a positive impact on your lymphatic system to help promote um, the removal of waste from the body. Last two. Last one. Meet me in the center. Okay, adjust your yoga pants or do whatever you need to do. Take your feet nice and wide on your mat, outside of your hips. These are called soothing aura squats. We're going to take a deep breath, inhale, arms come up overhead and trace them down your body similar to that sloughing motion as we come down. Inhale, pull it in, and exhale. So continue to do this. Let's talk about the word bandha, which means lock in Sanskrit. We are going to engage the mula bandha, which is right around the base of the spine. This is your pelvic floor. And to engage this bandha, it's like you are stopping the flow of urine. Yes, isn't that a good image? <laughs> and women know this as the Kegel exercise. 
So anytime we are balancing or doing a strength move, or right now at the base of the squat, I'm gonna kegel as I rise up. Yes. Now the next banda that we'll talk about is the uliana banda, and you can remember this because I think uliana umbilical. As I engage the center, I am pulling up through my mula banda and my uliana banda. If you're female, it's kind of like you're zipping up your mean jeans. Guys, well, I bet you have a pair of those too. <laughs> but for a better analogy, I think about engaging the pelvic floor, and on my exhale, I think about shrink wrap coming around my midsection. So I pull up through the pelvic floor, shrink wrap the midsection. And those two locks will, are what we're going to focus on predominantly through our practice. But I have a couple more bonds today that I hope to teach you through the feet, hands, and throat as well. You're actually already engaging the throat chakra through your breath as you exhale. Now, this is our last one because granted, you're probably pretty warm. We're gonna hold this nice, beautiful squat position. You can sumo rock side to side, get nice and deep and juicy, pulling the shoulders back. Here's a power element. In power yoga, you might hold a posture a little bit longer than you would in a vinyasa flow. So, we're holding this posture. We can still create a little bit of movement to nestle into the pose, encouraging the knees to pull back, externally rotating through the hip socket, wiggle your toes, awesome. Pull those shoulders back, and let's breathe. Peace begins with me. Exhale, peace begins with me. Inhale, peace begins with me. Exhale, peace begins with me. One more time, peace begins with me. Exhale, peace begins with me. Press the palms together, rise up, woo, and you can shimmy shake it off. Let's do some modified sun salutations, stepping to the top of your yoga mat. From here, our feet can be hips distance apart, everybody. Let's take a big sweep of the arms. Inhale, high prayer. On an exhale, we'll swan dive the arms out to the side, tipping from the hips, allowing the knees to bend. Hugging yourself, saying your positive affirmation, I love you, insert your name, and then pressing your hands to your shins, coming up to monkey's pose. Drawing in your uliana banda as you're engaging mula banda as well. Now, I'm gonna grab my block, you can place your hands on the block, small, medium, large. But the idea with monkey pose is to get extension through the spinal column to avoid rounding the back. And you can do this with bent knees. Okay, let's remove the block and we're gonna step back into our kneeling plank position. Hands are underneath the shoulders at this point, everybody. Take a deep breath, inhale. Exhale, bandhas are engaged on the exhale. As we lower down with strength and control, elbows hugging the ribs. Adjusting your hands as you need to for baby cobra, pressing your pubic bone into the mat, stretch the spine. Chin draws into the chest, push those hands away from the body, extended child's pose. Now slowly, we look at our, we shift forward, look at your starfish hands, curl the toes under, downward facing dog. Breathe it out, shake it out. Take your dog for a walk. And maybe give your dog a nice set of calves. Take a couple of calf raises here. I notice a lot of times in down dog, people will have tension in their head. They're looking out a lot. See if you can just take a nice head wiggle wobble and a big exhale. Stare at your toes. Now drop down to your knees and give me a cat cow. Oh gosh, that feels so nice, isn't it? From your tabletop position, slide your right foot forward or help it forward, and you can grab a hold of your block if you so wish. At this point, we're gonna come into a kneeling low lunge with a psoas stretch. Again, this is kind of my favorite way to flow. Make sure your front knee doesn't exceed your toes. And take the hand that's on the block, your left hand, reach it away from me right now. So it's reaching in towards the direction of that bent leg. This is a psoas stretch. Squeeze your left butt cheek, inhale, deep breath, and on an exhale, we're gonna release. We're gonna start to flow a little bit faster. 
Come into a half split. This is really just um, a way to stretch out your hamstrings and calves. I'm not going to hold it terribly long to keep it more dynamic. And we will repeat this on the side too. Any which way you need to, swing that right leg out of the way. Give me a cat, give me a cow. And then meet me into your downward facing dog. All right, do your alignment check. We should be taking the weight out of the joints. Allow the muscles of your body, because yes, you've got some good muscles. Allow the muscles around the bones to support you. Going back to that analogy of being buoyant, feeling that there is a form of energy around you, helping move you through these postures in the most supportive way. Rise to the balls of the feet, and then drop back down to all fours. Take your left leg, help that guy through. Prop yourself up on your block for a moment. Make sure that left knee doesn't surpass your toes, and you can lean into this lunge. Now, we'll take that right arm, we're going to lift it up, opening up the intercostal space. The intercostal space is the space between your ribs. When we open this up, we can breathe better. When you breathe better, you get out of beta state and into alpha state, which is the single thought process where we want to be to have our practice really be effective for us and for others. Take a deep breath, inhale, lengthen that side of the body, and exhale, we're going to unwind and come into this little half split. Oh gosh, that feels good. Spread your yogi toes wide. It's like your toes are doing jazz hands. Woo! Yes, oh, what a difference. Spread those toes wide. Feel like the air is passing through. <sighs> Get that leg out of the way. Okay, now from here, we're going to come back into our downward dog. Listen up. Rise up high to the balls of the feet. Wave your body forward into a high, high plank. And here's where it's like somebody's about to tickle you. So it's like push away, drop down to your knees, lengthen through the crown of your head, elbows back, chaturanga. Inhale, pubic bone drops, easy cobra. Exhale, push back, extended child's pose. Third eye to the mat. Now, we're going to repeat all this maybe a little bit faster and definitely grandiose. Get a quick drink of water. That is your warm up. So now we're going to proceed into a series of Hatha Yoga poses. And by the way, Hatha Yoga is an umbrella term that really we pull in thousands of different po postures to create a yoga experience. And this class with Empowered Yoga, we blend our affirmations with our poses. And like you experienced in that big old squat earlier, we might hold some poses a little longer than normal. So as we breathe and flow, I'd like you to think about the next two bandhas, the Hasa Bandha, the lock of the hand. With this energy, I'd like you to become more aware of what your hands are doing on your mat. One analogy I like to use a lot is like I am a tree frog and I have that, those sticky tree frog hands. So you want to think about very much like your fingertips are like suction cups. The same will hold true for your padabanda, padabanda, the soles of the feet. And most of you guys know I'm a foot model, so I'm sorry that we can't zoom in to look at my feet today. That is a joke. Okay. Now, the, the pada banda, the toes are spread very wide and the feet or the toes are like rose petals on grass. So they're not gripping into the mat. The arches of the feet are lifted slightly, but you're actually going to think about pushing through the center of the foot, what I call the imaginary shoelace portion. All right. You got all that? Enough tutorial? We are going to jam. So let's begin. Meet me in your downward facing dog. Inhale, extending tailbone to the sky. On an exhale, with the bottom is engaged, come into your high plank or kneeling plank. Lower down with strength and control. Click your heels together like Dorothy and start to stretch the spine. Exhale, pressing back, extended child's pose. Inhale to all fours. Exhale, give me a cat and cow. From tabletop, help that right leg through. Block is there at the ready to push up. Open up the intercostal space, supporting yourself on the right thigh. Exhale, hands free. That right leg stretch back, half split. Oh, we'll spread those toes wide. Focus on that padabana. Swing that right leg out of the way. And from your kneeling plank or full plank, if you're if you are true to form, high to low push. 
push-up. Inhale into easy cobra or upward facing dog if you're seasoned. Exhale, chin towards the chest, look at your belly button and come into down dog. Everybody breathe in, ujjayi out. Dropping down to the knees, cat cow. Tabletop, help lefty through any which way. You got the block as an option. Propping yourself up, right arm extends. Pull that chest back and open, smile. Oh, thank the Lord, that feels so good. Be grateful that you have the opportunity to practice yoga today. I'm grateful. Grateful for you guys turning in, tuning in. So let's swing that left leg back. Find your plank. Your plank does not have to be my plank. It could be kneeling, full, one foot, lower down, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, pressing the floor away. If there's any pain in your back, experiment from squeezing the glutes to not, because it is different on everyone. Chin in towards the chest, downward facing dog, deep ujjayi in, out. Inhale, exhale, lengthen through the spine, draw the tailbone up towards the ceiling, keeping the pelvis in neutral. Last one. One more time with this flow sequence, everybody. So push through the fingertips, getting out of the wrists, cat cow. Oh, tabletop, step that right leg through. Block is up there if you need it. Squeezing the glutes, engaging them, going a little bit further, even if it's by a millimeter. And exhale. Half split. Pull those toes back towards your face. Keep a soft bend in that right knee. Oh, I just love that. I could do that all darn day. Swinging that right leg back. How about another cat cow just because it feels so good? <laughs> Why not? Taking the left leg through. Putting the block into the opposite hand. Project your heart forward. Out and up. Breathing. Flowing. Love and life. And exhale, rock it back into your monkey toes, pull towards your nose. Yes, yes, yes. And block comes out of the way. Taking yourself into your plank, guiding yourself with strength and control, believing that you are strong, courageous, and you are love. Exhale, curl the toes under, lift up, downward dog. We're going to take three deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Stick out your tongue and say, Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Let's give our wrists a break by walking our feet to our hands, massaging out the backs of the wrists, crisscrossing the hands at the crooks of the elbows if we so desire for ragdoll, or if you are familiar with gorilla pose and have a range of motion, you can slip slide your hands underneath your feet and wiggle your toes. Give your wrists a nice reprieve wherever you are. And just look side to side, feeling your head very much plumb line, drawing down towards the earth. At any time you need to take a wrist break, remember that's also another option. Let's bend the knees 90 degrees. And airplane the arms, reverse swan dive all the way out. Come on up, hands to heart center. Ta da! Sana. All right, let's move into some warriors. Ready, warrior one, two, and three, and work on the padavada. So now you can consider like your feet are a little sticky, like you got grippy socks on, but again, the toes are light and the arches are lifted. So from here, from Tadasana at the top of your yoga mat, take your hands to your hips. Allow your pelvis to come into a neutral position, lifting the pubic bone slightly and drawing the tailbone down. Good posture. It's as good as I get, people. Shift your right, shift your weight, pardon me, onto your right foot and peel that sticky left foot off the mat. Now you're gonna take a couple of steps back. You're gonna go one, two, three. And your back foot is at about a 45 degree angle. I see this one happen a lot where they're actually more in a warrior two stance, an external rotation. We still have a little bit more internal rotation. You might need a step four or step five. 
Okay, here's the tough part, is keeping both hip bones shining forward. And I do that through encouraging the thigh bone on the right side to slide into my hip socket, and the hip on my left, I squeeze my left butt cheek to project the hip forward. Woo, big stretch, right? Inhale, arms come up. Today we're taking the arms in a high V, and I call, excuse me, I call this the gratitude uh, expression. Thumbs are back, arms are wide. Inhale, on an exhale, you're going to start to bow forward into an airplane lunge. Inhale, let the thumbs lead the way up and back, and exhale. Now at this point, I'd like you to move with freedom and grace with your breath. Reciting any affirmation you like. Perhaps you enjoyed the peace begins with me. Use your strong legs in this warrior position. Think about channeling Mother Earth's energy. Man, we're going to have to do, I said this last time, keep going. We have, we're going to have to do some yoga outside in the mud. I'm down. <laughs> that can help us actually really reset the body to get into nature. In fact, today, make sure you touch the earth today in some way and give her thanks. She needs it. Two more. All right, lift the toes on that right foot. On your last one, meet me in airplane. Okay, now you can stay right here. Or if you spy with your little eye your block, you're gonna take flight into airplane in the warrior three. So we're gonna hop, hop, hop that back foot in or power push off of it, engaging both butt cheeks big time. Flex your foot, flare your yogi toes. Hands are on the block. Now in airplane, we do lift the chest into an upward facing dog, drawing in your mula bandha and the liana bandha. In warrior three, you can take one arm out, this is tough, lengthening the lower leg. Spinal balancing here, thinking about stretching through the heel of that left foot, through the middle fingertips, and then maybe the other hand comes out, whoa, look on your hands, take it back, and at this point, allow yourself to retrograde from your airplane lunge, lift those front toes, up into your gratitude warrior one. Hands come to heart. We're going to externally rotate this left thigh into warrior two. So I should be able to trace a line from my front heel to my back heel. Sometimes I see people do it from the arch of their foot and back. That's not my jam. If that's you, that's cool. But I like to create a wider base of support and stability. Personally, I think it's more body friendly. Now we're going to start to drop down. Oh, I got some extra range of motion in my hips. See if you can create a right angle in that front thigh. Don't load up the joints. Let the muscles do what they're meant to do. Warrior two. Now, let's go surfing, shall we? Turn your yoga mat into a surfboard with me. So this is how I would hang ten. <laughs> For those surfers out there, they're like, yeah, that's not how you hang ten, work. But we're going to just create some motion in the ocean with this. Rolling the shoulders back. Make sure that this front knee doesn't torque on you. I said torque. See that? Direct your front knee in alignment with your right pinky toe. That will help keep good alignment. Last two. Last one. Palms face up and now switch directions of that rotation. Shrug your shoulders. Start to get some good heat through the upper body. Oh, awesome. Last two. Last one. Hanging out in warrior two. Here's the power element. Now from here, I'd like you to imagine that you're carrying two buckets of water that are very heavy, and then exhale, you release the water. Heavy buckets, and release. Repeating, heavy buckets, and release. Dropping lower into your warrior two. Energize your bandhas. From here, you're creating some additional heat through the forearms, giving your wrist the opportunity to feel the strength. Now, hold your two heavy buckets. I'd like you to close your eyes. Hold on tight. These two buckets inside them may contain elements that are not supporting you anymore. And you're going to bless and release these limiting beliefs. I'm going to count to three. And after that third breath, you will release 
You're limiting to beliefs out into the Earth's atmosphere. Take a breath in. One, two, three. Release them. Beautiful. From here, finding all the strength that you need. Wow, that was a big lunge. Spin onto the ball of your back foot or hop onto it. Step back into your plank. High to low push-up. Chaturanga Dandasana. Woo! Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And breathe. Shake it out. Wiggle it out. Walk it out. Now rise high to the tops of the toes. Bend the knees. Step where you can. If you're a hopper, you can hop. Take a couple of bunny hops. Feet to hands. Give yourself a loving hug. I love you. Insert your name, please. All right. Inhale, halfway lift. Get extension through your spine, monkey's pose. Exhale, back down, soft knees. Reverse your swan dive all the way out. Come on up. High prayer. Exhale, hands to heart. Tadasana. Beautiful. Let's try side two. I'm going to face a different way. So here we go from our warrior one. As we start to, or no, I don't want to face that way. I don't like it. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to start to peel the right heel off. And we're going to step it back. Three, two, one, or maybe a little further. Warrior one. Slide your left hip bone back as you squeeze your right butt cheek. Inhale, big gratitude arms. Let's flow. Pressing through your imaginary shoelaces of that front foot. Get out of the knee. It's all about hammies and quads. Lengthen your spine. Feel the dynamic energy from the crown of your head to your root chakra. Now, keep going. If you guys didn't know, my husband is in the corner doing this. How are you doing, man? Is this good? <laughs> We're doing a lot of verbal QA today, gang. So if you are going to be joining me in fitness, my Fitness Envy group next month, the queuing is great, but I want to start to take you through the poses a little bit faster. We'll have little mini tutorials in the group that you can uh, do breakout sessions with, but really for today's all intents and purposes, I'm, I'm just trying to break down some things a little bit more. All right, We'll have times to get more asanas in um, next week. Let's take this two more times. Dan stopped when I would stop. Keep going, babe. <laughs> Only I mixed up, just kidding. <laughs> okay. On your last one, here's where you come into your airplane lunge. Draw the shoulder blades together. Crack that heart chakra open. Let the love spill out because it is abundant. You have enough of it to share, and it will always be replenished. Find your block. Hepity hop that back foot in or just elevate it, getting ready for airplane. Now, at this point, I should think like I can put my block can't demo that right now, across my backside without it falling. So try not to do any funky hip movement. We're looking for right angles, and of course you can't see yourself, but you can feel it. Press through the heel of that right foot. Draw the navel into the spine. Let's go. Inhale, one arm can come out, or you can do look mom, no hands. Draw in your Mula Bandha, Uliana Bandha, biceps by the ears. Oh, can I do it on this side today? For three, two, one. Wow, my left leg really needs some TLC. That's interesting, isn't it? Start to hop back into your warrior one. And then from here, I'll switch sides. Let's get into warrior two. External rotation of your right thigh. Knees, think about the knees opening out. Yeah. Radio surfing in. Pinky toes should be covered as you look down. If you, can, if you can't see your big toe, then that means you're torquing your knee, you're twisting it. And ain't nobody got time for torquing the knees. So let's start to roll the shoulders. Good, Dan. That looks good. Dan has a really good warrior, too, by the way. Yeah. We're going to get him in here next time on in our sessions. But you got to join the group. See? Otherwise, you can't see Dan. <laughs> All right. Palms face up. Let's start to rotate. Lift those front toes. Now with this one, we're going to do a little bit different of our movement. Drop down into your warrior. Here's that power element where you can hold it. Neutralize the pelvis. 
Engage your bar nose. From here, you're going to curl your fingers in and squeeze. Give me two double bicep curls. And then as you exhale, you're going to drop it down and let it go. Out to warrior two. Curl it in. Squeeze, double bicep. And exhale. Let it go. Repeat this. And exhale. Today, all that I desire will come to me. Today, I let go of any limiting beliefs. Today, I give thanks for my many blessings. Today is going to be a good day. One more. You can do your own. Good. Meet me in that warrior too. How's that leg feeling? You feel it in here? Spin onto the ball of the back foot or hop. Step back into your plank high to a low push up. Inhale, grippy grab the floor. Upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog and breathe. Three big breaths here in through the nose and out. Relax the face. Drop down to your knees, take child's pose. Take some flowery wrist rolls and get a drink of water. Now, I would like to invite us to do all that movement, pretty similar movement, one breath per movement. What do you guys say? Mm -hmm. Of course, you can always fast forward this section. Now, we're going to be adding in our yoga push-ups. I want to give you guys a little bit of a taste of how you can merge all these poses together to create a very fiery, powerful, young practice. It's very masculine energy before we do our yin cooling poses. All right, let's just do it. Let's, let's get on with the show. Block is nearby. I'm going to throw all my back and tricks at you that we just did. Curl the toes under. Lift up into downward facing dog. Inhale, rise high to the balls of the feet. Exhale, step or hop, feet to hands. Big hugs all around. I love you. Inhale, halfway lift, monkey's pose. Exhale, back down. Inhale, reach out to come on up high prayer. Exhale, hands to heart. Tadasana. Okay. Step to the top of your mat. Big toes together to touch. Or you can keep a hips distance. It's up to you. We're going to be adding on. So we're going to do some chairs in here. We're going to sit out on a balance, but it's going to be firing almost one breath per movement. Take a deep breath. Inhale, high prayer. On an exhale, squat down low into a chair. Stay here or give me a big smile and do Utkatasana. Bring the hands to the heart. Inhale, power through the soles of the feet. The Padabandha, swan dive down. Take an extension of the spine. Ujjayi breath. Let it out. Grab a hold of the mat step, or if you're a jumper, you can hop back. High to low push up of your choice. Inhale into your cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, knees or no knees. Lift up into downward facing dog. Adding on a new move, lift your right leg up. This is a three legged down dog, but you're going to bring the knee to your nose in efforts to try to help that foot come through your hands. Coming up into our kneeling lunge, opening up the intercostal space once again. Maybe you're deeper now. Extending back into your half split. Now using the support of your hands, hippity hop that back foot into warrior one. Gratitude expression, squeeze your bum, exhale airplane. Shifting forward into your warrior three, elevate the back foot. Draw it all in, give me what you got. Extending arm out, and then finding the floor. Again, elevate the chest, you're doing it. Inhale. Exhale, open out warrior two. Encourage the knees to pull back. Grab a hold of those heavy buckets and then let them go. Yeah. Cartwheel the hands down, high to low push up, and it's your push up, not mine. Letting go of ego without in judgment, focusing on how strong you are in your practice. Inhale, extending left leg up, ah, three legger. And draw the knee to the nose. Look at it and let's see if you can help that guy through. From your kneeling lunge, inhale, right arm up. Everybody smile, give me a little winky wave. Hey, how you doing? And 
rock it back from your fingertips. Kiss your shin, I love you. Exhale, let's start to hop it up. Warrior one, lift the arch of that back foot. Thumb spin back, airplane. Push off, even out your chest and your hips. Finding warrior three. Guys, you didn't know, warrior three is my least favorite pose. I'm not trying to be negative. Oh, it's just so hard. Did you see that? Ah, get it together. Yes, I'm using the wall. Come on down, warrior one. Open out, warrior two. Pull it back. Drop the tailbone down. Zip up your main jeans for a second. And now feel the strength that you have created. Give it all you got. Believe in yourself. And release. Cartwell the hands. Step it back. High to look push up. You can do this. Come on. Let's go. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three big, beautiful breaths here. In through the nose, out through the mouth. This is called lion's breath, by the way. Release the heat. Release the toxins. Stay in the yoga zone. We're not finished yet. Rise high to the balls of the feet. Step or hippity hop. Feet to hands. Big loving hug to yourself. I love you. Insert your name. Exhale. Halfway lift. Let's squeeze the backs of the thighs. Reverse your swan dive all the way up. Let's get to know Ukatasana a little bit more. I'm going to bring my big toes together. You can stay hips distance apart. Ukatasana translates to uncomfortable pose. Think about lengthening through the crown of your head. Imagine as if you had a broomstick from the back of your head and it was touching your tailbone. In fitness land, we, that's how we monitor the alignment of the spine. I like using that little tip trick. You can take the arms, extend them out. And at this point, I'd like you to envision everything that you are deserving of receiving. You deserve love. You deserve to forgive yourself. This planet deserves to heal. All the lives that are doing extra work today, they deserve our love as well. So let's give it to them. At this point, you can drop lower. And now let the universe provide you with the strength, the courage, the belief, the confidence that we got this. Inhale. On an exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Lift all ten toes. Come on up. Shake it out. Step on your mat lengthwise. Come into a soothing or a squat. Deep breath in and out. Two more. Last one. Meet me in this deep squat. Sumo dance around. Knees pull back. Mula Bandha engage. A little extra energy lifting the heels. And hands come out. You will touch your pinky finger, or each tip of your finger to the tip of your thumb. We're going to go back into the peace begins with me phrase. Here we go. You got this. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Two more. Peace begins with me. Feel the vibration of the legs begins with me. We've got one more piece. Begins with me. Now take your hands. If your legs are shaking, good. You are alive. You are healthy. You are well. You are getting stronger. Drop the hips in alignment with the knees if you can. Breathing for five, four, three, two, on your last one, drop the heels down. Come on up. And you're going to shake. You're going to slough. You're going to do whatever you need to do to woo, feel better. That was amazing. Yeah, grab a drink of water. Go to your knees. Grab some water. We're going to move on to a standing balance. How are we doing on time there? Let's see. Okay. We're doing okay. So now, standing balances. We've been sitting a lot, at least I have, unfortunately. Today we're going to do standing figure four, all right? And we'll see what we feel like afterwards. First, we're going to come into a rocking tadasana, where you're going to experience what the padabanda really is. And my feet are doing this. OK? 
okay? They're becoming more and more articulate, and I'm experiencing the four corners of my feet, and I'm also, I'm working through my toes as well. I'm not gripping the floor, but I'm allowing the toes to kind of roll with this motion and get my toes to look straighter, because I'll tell you what, my feet are very damaged, and usually they look like this. Okay, so I'm trying to lengthen my toes. All right, now for this rocking Tadasana, you're gonna shift your weight onto one side and pull up through all your energy centers, the chakras of the body. I encourage you to go back to last week's lesson. We did a chakra tuning session at the end. So we balanced all of our chakras through, um, through me using a chime that helped with the vibratory effect of the um, energy centers. Chakra means wheel, wheel of energy, by the way. Okay, now at this point, if you're feeling more confident with balance, you're in the zone, you can always grab onto something to support you. You're gonna lift up one knee, and you're gonna think like you are just kicking your heel up to your opposite shoulder, okay? So that's all the external rotation I have. And that's all right, all right? We are calling this, if you guys have been following my workouts for this week, we are doing a lot of pretend games of happy sack. This just, I feel really like we need this right now because the tightest muscle in the body is right on the outer hip. It's called the piriformis. And we need, it's, we need it to be strong, not tight. <laughs> so to get some mobility in this area, this is um, an example of getting it stronger within a range of motion. All right, a couple more. Now, this is where we go into flexibility. So that's the mobility that I had. I wasn't using an external force to help me assist my range of motion. So we're gonna kick that heel across, and you can see the number four. Yeah, like Sesame Street. Hands, our thumbs to the sternum. Flare your yogi toes. Think like you're about to sit back into a lazy boy. Even out the hips. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh. Now, like a slow melting glacier, you'll continue to, to melt down. We'll come back to this. Allow yourself to come back up. Squeeze the butt. Now shift it over. Take it to the other side. I'll show you the side view. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, thumbs to the sternum. Lift, happy sack that thing, and drop down into figure four. Evening everything out. Oh, doesn't that feel delicious? Broomstick from the back of the head to the tailbone. I'm checking myself out, so there we go. Push the floor away to stand up. I'd like you to repeat this side to side. For my seasoned pr practitioners, we are going to drop a little bit deeper today. And if you're in my Fitness Envy group and you give me any special requests, like a forearm balancing series, you know I'll do it, but I need to know that you want to. Come all the way back up, good, and shift it. Good. Rely on the strength of your supporting leg. Avoid grabbing the floor with your toes. Hang in there with the breath. Push all the way out to come up. Now repeat that, I have one more add-on. If you can go a little bit lower, you can play, remember I said play, on hooking your toes on your tricep, okay? Hello, toes. Maybe I can go down and touch the floor, all right? It depends on where you are with your range of motion. I'm really hooked through that foot. You might even be able to walk your hands out like you're about to do a push-up. Now, the rest of that flying pigeon, if people are like, Aubrey, I wanna do flying pigeon, press pause, and practice flying pigeon. You know I want to, but we gotta save it for next week, okay? We will save flying pigeon for next week. Inhale, exhale. Thumbs to sternum as you drop it down, curling the tops of your toes onto your tricep. Maybe the fingertips touch. Maybe you walk it out with a leap of faith. Ooh, the hip, I love you, hip. And exhale. To come back. Good thing that wasn't the power element, was it? Woo, woo, woo. Awesome. 
All right, get another quick drink. We're going to take a vinyasa. Vinyasa means flow series down to the mat. And let's do our hip openers and shavasana. Inhale, deep breath in. Exhale, meet me in Upatasana. Thank you, God and universe, for providing us with health and healing. We will get through this experience. Exhale. Swan dive down. I love you, Aubrey. Inhale, halfway left monkey pose. Exhale, ground the mat, step back, high to low push up. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog and breathe. For three, two, last one. Dropping all the way down. Oh, that was so nice. Okay, make sure you have your blanket and socks nearby because when we come into Shavasana, we're gonna need that. All right, let's repeat some poses that we just did. Standing. This is why it's been so hard for me to not get water in. <laughs> I'm used to teaching and talking so much, I haven't been doing my goosh. All right, hands are gonna slide back, open up the chest. This is a version of figure four pose. It's a version of supine pigeon. So give me a little kick out with one leg and pretend that you just did that figure four. But from this point, I'm gonna take that hooking heel and I'm going to supply just a little bit of weight to my quadricep so that I can windshield wiper. Oh my gosh, this is totally what I needed today. Windshield wiper side to side. I just adjust my sp adjusted my spine in like three places. Oh, that's so good. Now from here, feel the weight of the leg of that of your top leg really pressing down. Mm -hmm. And then as you twist to the other side, linger there. At this point, you can readjust your hands. Fingertips come in. We're going to lift up into a figure four bridge or a reverse tabletop. So you can test the waters like a little crab, lift. Remember your hasa bandha, the hand bandha, lock, engage. Lift your pubic bone, open up the front of the shoulders. This one's tough for me. You can see like I'm not trying to check my form, we're almost there. And exhale. I'm still trying to get um, my shoulders, my shoulders getting better for those of you who knew, knew that I entered my shoulder. I fell down a flight of stairs. What the heck was that? That's not like me. So, yeah. I didn't do it through all the crazy stuff that I do. Well, it's getting room in something. So let's take the other, I digress. Let's take the other leg up and we come back and forth. Gang, if you liked this video, please share it with someone else. And please jump onto my website and take a look at our offerings. For the month of April, we're offering virtual classes with me and with my top-notch instructors who I'm so blessed to have them. I'm offering them cla these classes for $85 for the month of April 2020. And I'd love to have you. You're going to have live classes, pre-recorded classes. This will all be available to you. And it, so many classes, it breaks down to $2.13 a class. All right. So if you could keep our studio alive, we greatly appreciate it. We'll put the link to buy that option. Classes start Wednesday. Let's feel the weight of that stretch. And all you need to do is be on Facebook. If you're not on Facebook, we can work something else out though as well. And let's take it to the other side. Feeling the weight once again, stretching you out. Okay, so our figure four Reverse tabletop, adjusting your fingers. I do feel it in my wrist, but I'm so used to this stuff. It doesn't bother me. If it bothers you, I don't want that. I want you to take your time and build up that strength. Feel the stretch through the front of the shoulders. Now, let's talk about that breath. Inhale through the nose, exhale, contract the back of the throat. Inhale, exhale. Lift higher. Two more. Last one. Slowly lower down. Beautiful work. Let's bring the soles of our feet together and take some of our flowery wrist rolls. Take a butterfly. Oh, let the backs of the hands just enjoy this. Reverse that roll. This is like walking.
talking and chewing gum at the same time, do you think? Maybe. I don't know. Okay. Super fabulous. Now, at this point, just in the essence of time, we're going to do one more hip opener. And you're going to have to come to use your mat lengthwise. You're going to come into your seated straddle. And this is mine. Toes point up, pinky toes roll back, but more importantly, this motion comes from the hip sockets. Okay? Externally rotate. You can adjust yourself as need be, but we're going to be walking the straddle today. And the walking is done with tented hands to bring, um, to give the wrists a little bit of a reprieve. So you're going to start to spider walk around. You can go as slow as you like. But promise me you're keeping both butt cheeks on the ground. So your walk might look different than mine, where maybe it's more shallow or more deep. You might find a spot in your spider walk where you want to hang out. Oh, that feels good. Guys, I know I've gone over time. That's not a bad thing, but I could do this, honestly, for another hour. I'm serious. I love practicing yoga, and this is just the tip of the iceberg for me. It takes me a long time to get loose and warmed up. Usually after I teach two hours of classes, then I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go. <laughs> and it's not because I'm 40. No, it's not. Don't be saying I'm old. I've always been like this. In my early dance career, I've always had to warm up tremendously. I was never one of those dancers that was like, five, six, seven, eight, let's go. Uh, no, I got there like an hour early to warm up. <laughs> it is what it is. Let's come on to the center. Oh my goodness, doesn't that feel great, gang? All right, shake it out and let's start to nosy our way back. What I need you to do is have your block and your other paraphernalia nearby. Let's hook a leg, come on down. Give yourself a loving hug. Oh my goodness. We're coming into dead bug. A block is a nice thing here if you have trouble getting your low back to touch the floor. Grab a hold of the outsides of your feet. Walk on the ceiling for me. Squeeze your biceps by bending your elbows. Draw those knees into your armpits. Feeling now a sense of support from the earth. I'd like you to close your eyes for a moment. Visualize yourself in a grassy field, feeling the earth and the soil underneath your back. You welcome this sensation as you feel the energy of Mother Earth supporting you. And she has your back. And in this moment, you thank Mother Earth for all she has done for you. The things that we have perhaps not thought about daily, even taken for granted. We give her thanks and we promise her that we will help her heal. And we will help all inhabitants on this planet do the same. Now at this point, you can remove the block and start to rock side to side for happy baby. Since it's happy baby, I'd like you to smile. And you can just relax your neck, let your head go with this motion too. We're coming into a supine pigeon crunch. You're going to love it. You're going to take your left heel, press it over your right. Thumbs are going to run down the back of your head like you are just applying a little bit of traction, healthy traction for the spine. Inhale, exhale, crunch up and back down. Bondas are going to help too. I think about squeezing my butt, my pelvic floor, my transverse abs. So that's butt, mula banda, uliana banda. Now, to get more bang for your butt, you're going to pull your lower body and to meet your upper body without letting the elbows come into your vision. Keep your elbows just into your peripheral. Let's take four more. You can even lift the hips off the ground. Three, two, last one, up and hold. You can even say peace begins with me and relax. Keep that hooked heel and allow your legs to fall away from me. So if you're hooking that left leg, they fall to the right. Twist. Oh my goodness. I just realized I haven't twisted in forever. Thank you guys for giving me this opportunity. 
Oh, Lordy. Come on back to the center. From here, you're going to take both legs and you're just going to kick them out. And then you're going to flick and flail. Kicky, kick, flick, flail. Oh, take some full breaths. Let it go. Let's come into the other side. Extend your right heel onto your left thigh. And let's start with our crunches. Deep breath in and out. As soon as I go out with my exhale, that's when I pull my bandhas in. All right? And if you're like, I can't think of that. What if it's the opposite for me? I'm doing the opposite thing. That's okay. I know, like with Pilates style breathing, there are so many different ways to breathe, and it's fun. I love learning them all. Because I'm going to take a Wim Hof cloak here. You can get high off your own supply. Although, I have been saying for years, my quote is, you want to get yoga high. All right? So, Wim, it's not all you, buddy. But you know I love you anyway. All right. So, we're going to come into this lower upper body crunch. There we go. Push the knee away. Woo! Let the hips lift. I love doing this one because it helps me get that piriformis stretch, but wow, does that really fatigue my rectus abdominis quickly. Yeah. Let's go four more. Chin is off the chest. Oh, by the way, I forgot about this bandha. This is called the Jalandara Bandha. So in here, we're not allowing the chin to touch the chest. It's like I have a fist distance of space between chin and chest. I know I said four more, but keep going. Last one, I promise. Now allowing the legs to drop over towards me. Oh, twist. You can use your hands to help weight that leg down and look in the opposition of your legs. Okay, come on back to the center. You have five magical bridge hip lifts. Heels draw into the sitting bones. Let's lift it up for five. Push through the shoulder blades, push through the backs of the arms. Three, two, one. Now you're going to do five more without squeezing your butt. That's hard. No butt squeeze. Let your glutes relax. Yes. Very good. Now for today, I'd like you to take a reclined straddle and allow your hands to come to the inner thighs. You're going to think about letting the legs drop down towards the ground, and then you change your mind, pull them back. Drop down to the ground. This is an inner thigh release, okay? And it can feel very soothing and relaxing for a lot of people. Why? Because we store a lot of trapped emotions in our hips. And I can't even tell you, when I hold maybe like my straddle for two minutes, or if I hold a deep hip opening posture in yoga for two minutes, when I am done, I feel like I can take, I can conquer, you know, my day. I can totally take over my day, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel so good and so happy. So any of these hip poses that you know of in yoga that you need to do more of, please, please feel free. Hold them for for two minutes once you're warm. You can take your block at this time, or just bring your hands underneath your butt. We're not going to go into shoulder stand today because I don't have enough time to really explain it. But we are going to do a sloughing of the legs again. So hips on the block, or um, I fib to you, take, you can't put your hands under your bum because then you can't slough. So either block or no block, you're fine. You're going to take a nice leg stroke here. Start from the top and go down. You can go gentle, applying that appropriate touch on the body. Now this would be more like a lymphatic um, massage. Right, because we're pulling the lymph, that any of that toxic waste that the lymphatic system has um, has gotten, we're pulling that energy, that toxic waste rather, to the cleansing organs of the body. And if we're we're stagnant all day, this is really important. This is a natural way to detox. Let, let's talk about detoxing naturally. Breath, deep breathing is one. Big exhales, sweating. Urinating, obviously number two. Women menstruating, as well as uh, these different lymphatic massages. If you're not menstruating, did you know a fun fact I learned? You can donate blood that will also help 
uh, help your body out, believe it or not. Yeah, look into that. Okay. Men should donate blood as well. Okay, now from here, you're going to hug your right knee into your chest and allowing your left leg to drop down. See, I love doing this one with the block. Oh my gosh, right across the top of my head. Feels wonderful. But I bet you still feel great without the block too. And then we're just pulling down other leg. Try to hold onto your shin with a cup grip versus grabbing the knee. And let's switch one more time each way. Reach through your toes. Extend energy in opposition to the crown of your head through your toes. And release. Any other pose or asana that you want to do, now is the time to do it. We're going to come into a Shavasana today, something that is guided. So you can press pause, or if you're ready to go into it with me, give yourself one big giant hug. And I'd like you to squeeze your toes, your nose, your fingers, your bottoms, your cheeks, your chin, everything that you got. Squeeze tight, tighter, tightest. Go, 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 go. Exhale. Whew. Release. Relax. Coming onto your back, I will sit up and talk you through this, but I'd like you to put on any attire that you need to to get comfy. Don't skip this pose, guys. I used to be that person. Don't do it. This is probably the best part, sometimes the hardest. But come onto your back and get comfy, everybody. Today, we are going to end similarly how we began, taking our left hand to our heart chakra and our right hand to our solar plexus. I'd like you to merge these two points. And let's circle back to our desire and our expectation. Filling that bottom hand with air and energy, feeling the rise of the solar plexus, the stretching east to west of the lungs, and then into the face, and then let it go. Let's create this wave. Inhale. Exhale. In, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, one more time with me. Now, continue to breathe and breathe deeply. Please remain in your Shavasana. I'd like to coach you through one last element today that will leave you feeling invigorated, empowered, believing in yourself, believing in the power of people as we unite our conscious minds. We're going to breathe for 20 counts. This 20 count breath, when you get to the top, you will pause just for a moment and you will exhale for 20. We'll repeat this three times. Let's begin. Inhaling for one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Releasing twenty, nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Inhale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, exhale, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Did you feel how much you stretched your lungs? You expelled the toxins you soaked in as much purified air as you possibly could. Now with this sensation, this huge vibration of energy, with a smile on your face and love in your heart. You can slowly roll to the left or to the right of your fetal position. And on your own timing, help yourself to come up if you're ready. We will conclude our yoga practice today by bringing our hands to our heart center. When I bid you the word namaste, you can say it back to me. The word namaste means, I honor the place in you where the entire universe dwells. I honor the place in you so that when you are in this place in you and I am in this place in me, we are one. Namaste. Thank you everybody so much. Please give yourself a round of applause. Have a beautiful day today. Make sure you drink plenty of purified water. Add some lemon uh, and lime in there if you've got any at home. And share this video if you liked it. Feel free to follow me on all the social media channels and join me on the Pittsburgh Today Live morning show uh, for our Fitness Friday segments channel too. And heads up, spoiler alert, I have a group transformation program that's starting after Easter. It's going to be affordable and it's going to be something totally different. So if you've worked with me with my online programs before, get ready because this is so cool and I'm so excited to have this chance to share it with you. Lots of love to you today, guys. Mwah.